I'm Desiree. And I'm Jordan. And this is Captain Oso, the little dude. Seven years ago, we bought a super neglected, really small sailboat that we called Atticus with the dream of seeing the world. We, uh, for better or worse, own this boat now. Over the next seven years, we spent a lot of time fixing up Atticus. But we also did boat work for money in Mexico, <laughs> traded lobster for rum in Cuba, dodged pirates off of Nicaragua, and lived off grid in Panama during the pandemic. It's better than I thought it would be, you know? Through it all, we made a ton of mistakes and faced a lot of fear, doubt, and insecurity. It's okay, buddy. But we also learned that if we rely on each other and just don't give up, that we can accomplish more than we ever imagined. Recently, we upgraded to our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, and are now making our way up the coast of New England on our way to Maine, where we hope to continue to outfit the boat and explore one of the country's most stunning cruising grounds. Last week, we sailed out of Martha's Vineyard and navigated through Woods Hole, Massachusetts, one of the sketchiest channels in this part of the country, and are now sailing through Buzzards Bay on our way to the Cape Cod Canal. Approaching the entrance to the Cape Cod Canal, basically it just cuts right through Cape Cod so that if this didn't exist, we'd have to go all the way around the Cape. As I understand it, the Cape Cod Canal is the widest canal in the world. We are doing nine and a half knots, wow. so we've probably got about three knots of current with us right now, nice. which is a lot. Wow, that's a lot of current over there. Look at that. Look at that. Dude, that's nuts. Canal Railroad Bridge, Cape Cod Canal Railroad Bridge. This is sailing vessel Atticus. Atticus, this is uh, Canal Control. The bridge is in Maine right now. We're going to do for you. Oh, we were just uh, heading over that way. Is it open and clear to pass through? It is. There's an evening uh, scheduled train from about 7 o'clock tonight. To, uh, the bridge is fully open, 135 feet. <laughs> okay, copy that. Thanks for your help. It's so crazy to be this close to the shoreline and be in like 40 foot water, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I feel like I can see into their house. <laughs> yeah. I'd want this little house right here on the water with the uh, back deck. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll sleep on your couch. <laughs> Make it under this bridge? I think we're pretty good to go on this yeah? one. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, do you know how tall it is? He said the clearance is 135. That is the railroad bridge. They do close it from time to time. They said tonight they're closing it at 7. So the whole bridge just actually gets lower down to the, right near the water line. right now. It's crazy. 10 knots? 10 knots. Whoa. Yeah, so the autopilot's just like not really handling the current really well. I was trying to go to the port, but it was not wanting to, so I just overrode it. Now I'm just gonna drive. And I can yeah. feel the resistance. I mean, there's a lot of eddies in the water. There's all kinds of little swirling going on. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what is just like left, right, left, right. <laughs> Hold on. Definitely a challenge keeping the boat going straight. <laughs> we exit the canal, you gotta be real careful of if there's a side current once we leave the breakwaters. All right, well, say goodbye to Cape Cod. Bye, Cape Cod. Cape Cod's over there. The harbor? The pack. <laughs> oh, I left my car. At Cape Cod. At Cape Cod. Des, how are you feeling over there? I'm glad you're here because I'm feeling a little seasick. <laughs> I'm fine when I'm just like laying around, but when I have to do something with my hands, I'm concentrating. Like, 
Well, here's your food. Ooh, um, that's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at this, Oso. Maybe Giovanna wants to live aboard permanently. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. What is this? Is this pork? Yeah, pork tenderloin, uh, some couscous, and roasted butternut squash. Wow. Thanks, Cinderella. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, what? Did you see that? I, I thought I saw it. Yeah, look at that. That it's. I think that might be a whale. Right out there. Do you look? Oh. That's a whale right there. I think that's a humpback. Oh, there it is. Oh sh! It's dead ahead. Holy sh! That's so cool. Is that in the white thing? I think. Yeah. I think those are the bubbles. Oh, it's going right. Okay, hard to port. Hard to port. You're good. Hold your course. Whoa. That's so cool. We're gonna get the tail. Woo White over there. Oh, tail, tail, tail. And there's a tail. Look at that flesh look. Oh, that's so cool. Way out there. Wow. Yeah, that was so cool. That's crazy. And just like seeing the mass of its bubbles, like it took up a big part of the water. I know. And then its tail when it came up. Oh, that was so awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm like still all pumped, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, dog can you ease this uh, green line on this side? So now this is called sailing wing on wing with the sails on either side. And we're probably boogieing six and a half. Nice. Good thinking, bud. This is definitely one of the best just afternoons of sailing we've ever had, for sure. Yeah. It's super calm. There's just the right amount of wind. We're booking it at like six and a half to seven knots. Uh -huh. Got great crew. Cinderella just signed a two year contract. She did. <laughs> straight ahead. Looks like we're clear. Oh, there's two there, too. It's like we're in a minefield of buoys. Hey, bud, there's one dead ahead. You might want to go a little bit to starboard, though. A little to starboard? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're just now sailing over a bank. The water that we've been in has been like 150 feet deep, and the water here is like 60 feet. And so all of a sudden, there's just lobster pots everywhere. It's little buoys with flags. So we're kind of having to keep a really close watch to avoid them. This is something that I think is very common off the coast of Maine. So we're gonna have to get good at doing this. Once you get over a certain depth, and it's not super deep, they don't really put them out anymore. And so tonight, we will be in deeper water. We're not going over any more banks. Hopefully we won't have to deal with just running blind through fields of lobster pots. How's it going down here, G-Dog? It's good. I'm just making a little snack. Charcuterie? On the charcuterie board. Should pair well with our evening tea. Ah, yes. Man, it's just crazy that we're underway right now. I wonder what my first night underway is gonna look like. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you excited, nervous, scared? 
um, excited because I it doesn't feel as rough as it did when we were at Anchor at some points. Also a little nervous because I'm gonna have to be on watch at some point. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, you trying to make your way over here? Hi. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I've never been on a watch, so at night I'm not really sure how that's gonna look. Yeah. So, I remember my first watch. I was surprised because I actually really liked it. Mm. It's like very peaceful and they're just like blackness all around. So. Sounds dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers to your first day. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah cheers, Gio. <laughs> He's like, yeah, cheers me too. I'll have some yeah, of that yeah. meat actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give me that cheese. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's right over there. He's like maybe a hundred feet to our left. There he is. Holy cow, he's so close, there's his tail. Ah! Definitely a humpback. <laughs> whoa. Oh, whoa, look at all these birds in front of us. All right, G-Dog, it's your first night watch and we just went over everything you need to be concerned about. Yes. Do you feel prepared? I feel prepared enough. Okay. <laughs> to know that if I'm overwhelmed, wake you up. <laughs> yeah, that is. That is basically the rule. Yeah, it's a nice night. There's a lot of moonlight, so I feel like I'm not completely surrounded by darkness. Yeah. Nice. I just saw there's a red light to our port side, very far away, so I'm keeping my eye out for that. Other than that, I don't see any other boats. I don't know if it should be a concern of mine to like run into a whale. <laughs> but both of them that we've seen have been very close to the boat. Yeah, good luck. And uh, we'll see you soon, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Lethal. A little sleepy? Yeah. It's my 10 minute alarm. Yeah. How was your first watch? It's kind of busy. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes you get really busy watches and it's just super exhausting. Jordan was up here for a while because I was like drifting off course by more than two miles. So then he was like, okay, rather than keeping your mileage off course under two and a half or under three, just keep it under 10. So we changed the parameters. Yeah. And then, so I saw a light on our, what was that? Port, Port side. side. Uh -huh. So then um, Jordan came up here and the boat crossed in front of us. Oh. But it wasn't on AIS. Uh -huh. He like put the radar on. Oh, okay. It was only like two miles away from us. Oh, dang. Well, other than that, <laughs> how was your first watch? <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad for Jordan because he was up for like, <laughs> probably half of it. Yeah. That's kind of what happens when you're first learning anyways. I mean, he was asleep now for like two hours straight, I think, which is good for us. And that was actually the first time we got to like sleep together on the passage. <laughs> so that was kind of weird and nice. <laughs> yeah. I actually think my favorite watches are at night because it's cooler and you kind of just feel alone, but protected at the same time and safe. And so it's this very unique feeling where you're just out here and all you have to rely on is your own two hands, your brain, your partner, and your boat. But if all those are pretty solid and you're putting work into each one of those, then, you know, it's a very empowering 
and super rewarding feeling because you look around and it's just just gorgeous out. up a little bit so we've been going consistently five knots. This was such a nice watch. I really lucked out. <laughs> is set in pretty thick. There are a lot of lobster pots around, so I'm thinking maybe one of us should just be on the bow. We don't need someone on the bow. You can see them from back here yeah. and like react to them. It's just that you need to be vigilant, so maybe we'll just do like 15 minute rotations or something, you know? Oh, I think I see land over there. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's Seguin Island. All right, we made it. Land ho! Cinderella, put the beer in the refrigerator. Already done it. Appreciate it. Now I'm actually switch. I switched the radar over to overlay on top of the chart so that I can confirm things. Like I can see there's a channel marker or like a buoy over here, and there's a little radar blip there, so I can confirm our position basically. Because if we rely only on GPS, that's kind of shady because maybe our GPS is a little bit off. And so to have the GPS and the radar kind of sync up and match makes me feel really, really confident about where we are. And so I, I basically can navigate using those two things together. Well, it's, uh, it's dense fog now and we're coming into our approach to the river which is unfortunate. I was hoping to be able to see, but oh well, it's just gonna be a little more challenging than we thought. And we're coming up to, I think it's Sheep Scott River. It's a very simple approach. All the dangers are marked. I'll be able to confirm those markers on radar, but ugh, still not very excited about it. Anyway, so now we're down to just the Genoa so that we can sail as slowly as possible. All right, so guys, I think the best way to do this is I'll focus mostly on the radar with occasional scans around us. Okay. So if you guys kind of focus purely around us, so Desiree, if you're like looking forward and to the right, uh -huh. Geo, if like you're looking forward and to the left, um, and just like casually scanning, and then I can be checking the instruments, I think that'll work well. Okay. And other than that, I'm just gonna be here being more nervous than I probably need to be. <laughs> if you guys need me, that's what I'll be doing. Stand by, G-Dog. G-Dog, do you hear that? Yeah. It's like a motor. That? Yeah. Not that way. Yeah. If you start to hear it get louder, let me know. Okay. I started hearing a motor or an engine over here. Uh -huh. And uh, like not long after I started hearing it, an AIS target popped up. And yeah, there's a boat coming kind of for us and it looks like they should go ahead of us. 
the wind has died down a lot, and so we're only doing like two knots or less now. We should definitely start motoring, which is too bad, because I, I was just saying how it's nice I can hear stuff, but it's not gonna happen. Well, I didn't think it was possible, but the fog has gotten denser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some... Uh, Oh boy, yeah, to the right. Support. Yeah. We are just crawling along because we don't see the lobster pods until they're pretty much right in front of us. Man, this is so nuts. It's crazy to think there's land like half a mile that way. Yeah, so we're just in the middle of this river right now. God, what an interesting day. All right, so we're gonna be going through this pass. Now, it's already sketchy as is, because um, there's gonna be a little bit of current and it gets real narrow. So that current will kind of like funnel. So we gotta nail it. So I'm gonna need one person on the bow trying to find like all the buoys and markers. Uh -huh. And then also, in the event that we get a lobster pot, because uh -huh. I read a, an account of someone that nailed a lobster pot in like the worst spot yeah. and lost their engine. I need someone back here on standby with the main sheet, if that were to happen. Okay. Okay, you all set, bud? Yeah, ready. Okay. So like I said, we're gonna have a green to port, green to starboard. If you see either one, point it out. Okay. Okay, I see the port uh, marker, channel marker. Oh yeah, okay, got it. Okay, next up, we're gonna have some kind of a marker to port, and it's, a, it's gonna be green. Okay, you got a lobster pot dead ahead, which you will need to adjust course for. Got it. So the green that we're gonna see, it's almost dead ahead, a little to port. Okay, I think I see the port marker. It's on like a piece of land. <laughs> I can't believe this. It just totally cleared up just as we started getting to the sketchiest bit of the day. That's very lucky. Man, you can smell the pine trees. Yeah, you can. Okay, you see that red marker? Yeah. So that marks the sketchiest part of the channel and we're gonna keep it to the right. Okay, we're out of the woods, bud. We made it. That was, I would say, stressful, fun, rewarding, new. What would you say? Eerie. Yeah. Yeah. Eventful. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, bud? Yeah, those are all great. <laughs> <sighs> it was just so nerve wracking. Yeah. Normally, I'm kind of over the top cautious. But then when there's zero visibility, that's like normal amount of caution. Like I'm suddenly in that situation where the boat could actually crash into some rocks, you know? But still, it's just, I get worked up. And so I feel like this, I'm like out of it how. And it was crazy because it went from the most stressful situation to this like very simple situation. Well, you want to cheers? I'm talking. Jordan's over there sipping away. I'm <laughs> talking too much. I'm talking too much. Just right? Like, Come on. All right. Cheers. cheers. We made it. We made it. <laughs> to brevity. <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed the episode. I just wanted to mention a couple of quick things. First of all, if the audio quality in this episode or in the previous episode in Martha's Vineyard was kind of annoying. I want to apologize for that. It's just because there was kind of a hidden switch on our mic that accidentally got hit. And so a lot of the audio from the last two episodes was actually filmed on the in-camera mic. And so long story short, we fixed that problem and the audio should be better in the upcoming episode. Another thing that I wanted to mention was that sailing in fog is a tricky thing and we are still learning the best ways to tackle that challenge. 
And in this episode, we didn't use a foghorn. And that's something that I would highly recommend that we have since learned is a really good strategy for making sure that other boats in the area can hear you while you're navigating in low visibility areas. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll catch you guys next week.